I'm Jeff Gonzalez, President of Trident Concepts. And today in this video segment, we're going to be talking about zeroing your rifle. There's a lot of different ways to do this. And really all we're going to do is we're going to take one snapshot of the zero that we're going to be working with, which is going to be the 50 slash 200 yard zero. A couple things that I want to talk about, first of all, is that there's probably going to be plenty of people that are going to try to sharpshoot us with regards to what we're going to be putting out on this video. And I would encourage you to kind of hold your thoughts on all of that. And you know, probably as we go through the various other zeros, you'll probably start to make more sense of what we're talking about here. Um, the other thing is that I could sit here and we can go into a extensive lecture on zeroing. It's going to be talking about ballistics. It's going to be talking about, you know, properly setting the gun up to, to begin with. And I mean, that can take a long time. And in our classes, we've got to be able to condense this down. I literally, my rule of thumb is that if I can't explain this on the back of a cardboard target to shooters, then it's way too complicated. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to show you what, what that's all about. Literally, I break out a cardboard target and I sit there and I draw out a short little diagram and I go through and I explain all those points and I try to get across to them what we're talking about. Because what we're talking about is your point blank range or more specifically your maximum point blank range. The way that we define that is we first have to start off by understanding what is our target zone. So for our purposes, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with a 8 inch target zone. So. 8 inches to work with. So what that means is that I basically got 4 inches high, 4 inches low to work with from the center point. Pretty simple stuff here. So my point blank range is going to be based off of the external ballistics, the trajectory that the bullet's going to fly at. The moment that the bullet exceeds that 4 inches, whether it be 4 inches high or 4 inches low, we are going to say that it has exceeded our point blank range because at that point what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to now need to start holding or I have to start teaching shooters how to hold. So if my at a certain point in my trajectory say whatever yard line you want your bullet is going to be you know five and a third inches above well then that means that bullet strike is going to be theoretically here and if I want to get that bullet inside of the target zone I have to hold somewhat low in order to do that. So instead of aiming in the center of the target zone I now have to start to aim a little bit low. So it gets into a lot of thought process that the shooter has to do under stress and we're trying to make it simpler all right? which is why the point blank range has been really really effective for us. So if I just use four inches as my benchmark here and I look at all the various zeros and I try to map them out to see at what range does this four inches occur and that would be the the limit if you will of my point blank range so maybe it's maybe it's 300 maybe it's 200 maybe it's 500 I don't know you're gonna have to plug in the pertinent data into some software and then figure it out from there um, I always remind people that the data that you're gonna get from a lot of the software is it's just that, it's raw data. You still need to take that information, you need to take it out to the range, and you need to confirm it. All right, And that's taking the shooter well past just the square range mentality. It's really taking the shooter and moving them closer to the rifleman, what we want. We want the shooter to know his ballistics to the point where he doesn't have to think as much as you know maybe other shooters using a different theory might have to. Um, so once you have identified that four inches in your trajectory, then you're, you're pretty much set. And you go out again and test that raw data, confirm it, and then you're good to go from there. So let's actually start talking about some, um, some terminology here. Uh, again, this is not going to be drawn to scale, so don't give me a hard time for any of that. So the bullet's going to start below my sight line. This line represents my sight line. And we can put arbitrary ranges here. We'll put 25, 50, we'll put 100, maybe we'll put the 200, and maybe we'll say that this out here is 300. All right? So we put some arbitrary range markers on this. My bullet is going to start below my sight line because of the height over bore. So most shooters, most M4 variants are going to have a two and a half inch offset, which means that my sight is generally going to be about two and a half inches above my bore. So um, right off the bat, I'm starting two and a half inches below the target. And we, you know, we kind of go into that during the class. And so what you're going to get is you're going to get basically some sort of arc that's going to look like this. And again, not to scale. Things that I want to start to look at. 
Um, I probably should change this up a little bit to avoid some confusion here. Let's do this. Let's make this 50. I did not draw my 200 and we'll say that this is the 25. So I did not draw my arc too well here. Okay, so let's talk about some terms. HOB is going to stand for height over bore. Okay. This is going to be my first intersection. What I have here, MO is maximum ordinate, and this is going to be my last, or sometimes we'll just use a digit here, second intersection. Okay, so basic terminology here. My bullet is going to travel in an arc. So it will leave my barrel below my sight line, height over bore. It's going to intersect, in this case I'm using a 50 yard zero. My first intersection of my sight line is going to take place at the 50 yard line, thereabouts, roughly. Then it's going to continue to climb. Remember, my barrel is sitting at a slight upward angle. All right? If I do no correction, if I use what's called absolute trajectory, then the bullet is going to leave the barrel and it's going to eventually just be pulled to earth by gravity. Now that might work, for example, for a pistol. Pistols are an example of an absolute trajectory sight system. Now with corrected trajectory on a rifle, I'm going to actually correct that trajectory by either elevating or depressing that muzzle to launch the bullet in an arc. Now as that bullet continues to climb, it's going to reach the apex of that arc, which we call maximum ordinate. In this case, it's going to be about, well, let's say about one and a half inches, thereabouts. You know, they, they vary depending on what the specifics of the zero are that you're using. Once it reaches that, it's going to go ahead and continue to fall towards the earth, and it will cross my sight line for the second time at the roughly 200 yard line. And then it will continue to be pulled to the earth until it makes contact with the earth. And usually um, at the 300 yard line, it's going to be about 8 inches low. All right, now these are rounded figures just to make it easy for everybody to kind of understand what we're talking about here. So you can see that with this particular trajectory, I really don't reach 4 inches. You know, at the 25 yard line, even at the zero yard line, my mechanical offset, the height over bore, is only two and a half inches, which is well within my four inch point blank range. So it's well within it right off the get go. Then it's going to cross the first intersection. Then it's going to climb, continue, and it's only going to climb, let's just say, let's round up to two inches. Even if it climbed up to two inches, at say, you know, the 100, 125, 150 yard line, that's still well within that four inch PBR that I'm looking for. Then it's gonna to start to climb back down, second intersection at or about the 200 yard line, and then it'll continue to fall until it reaches the uh, ground. Again, at about 300 yards, it's dropping significantly. Um, you might find that your point blank range is gonna end 225, 250 yards. After that, you're going to need to start to adjust your sights in order to hit the target. And that gets into a whole other ball of wax. So if I can just get the students to see this, to understand this, then start incorporating the zero point blank range, it all starts to make a lot of sense. Now, we'll come back and we'll start looking at some different zeros, or actually better, what we'll do is we'll take it to the range and we'll actually shoot several different zeros to give you a, an actual perspective without changing your point of aim what are these various zeros going to do? Because that's really where the rubber meets the road. I can sit here and tell you what my experience has been with these various zeros, but you're still going to need to go out there and you're going to need to play with it. Nothing's free. You're going to have to put some work into this and try to figure out what is my best zero. A lot of times shooters will ask me, well, what should I use as my zero? Should I use the 25, the 50, the 100, the 200? Like everything that we talk about, you have to define your mission. What is your mission? If you don't clearly know what your mission is, then you're not going to really be able to select the best zero for you or for your particular situation. Once you can define that mission, say in this case, hey, urban settings, I'm probably not going to really engage targets out past 100 yard lines. Okay, fine. That's information that you use. You can start to filter out a lot of that other crap out there and really fo focus on what is going to be optimal for you. Let's say, on the other hand, you're going to have to extend, uh, extend your range out several hundred meters in order to hit targets at two, three, four hundred yards. Well, again, you need to define that in your mission because that's going to help you select the specific gear that you're going to need in order to get hits on targets at those extended ranges. 
Can you still do it with the normal red dot sight? Of course you can, but you need to have a better understanding of what your mission is so that you can more precisely refine your equipment and your tactics. All right, so again, hopefully that explains it, gives you just a bare bones understanding of what you need to be doing and, and why we sit here and try to encourage students to start off with a 50 yard zero because it's really easy. All right? It's easy for us to get it on paper. It's easy for us to, um, to, to hit at a, you know, what I would consider to be you know, maximum extent of an urban setting, you know, out to 100 to 200 yards. So it gives everybody a good roundabout zero that's going to find, um, they're going to find a lot of usefulness. We'll take it to the range and we'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons in a later video so that you can see what we're talking about. All right, so thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the video. Send us your comments. Have a good one.